Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today we're going to be enjoying White Dwarf issue 472. Look at that guy. Look at that chaos face rain, which has a tale of four warlords, the grand finale, Empyrean versus Death Guard battle report, Gene Steeler cults in Kill Team, rules updates for the Ossiarch Bone Reapers, uh, Black Library Tonekeeper serial novella. And much more for Warhammer Age of Sigmar and Warhammer uh, Warhammer 40,000. And the insert inside seems to be Grand Tournament Secondary Objective Cards. So let's look at all that. <laughs> All right, A Tale of Four Warlords, the Grand Finale, Imperium versus Death Guard. I already went over that. Let's check it out. New Tales to Tell from Lyle Lowerly. This issue is marked by the beginnings and ends. Our Tale of Four Warlords for Warhammer 40,000 comes to a con concluding crescendo and it's been quite a ride. We've seen some particularly impressive armies from this group of warlords and their journeys are now at a satisfying end, save perhaps one big battle. Uh, we enter the Nakam Gauntlet in the Warhammer 40,000 Flashpoint kicking off here, and I think it's the best one yet, with Imperium besieged by chaos, uh, forces of chaos, its most heated rivalry in the galaxy in terms of theme. This Flashpoint is so classically grimdark. Tell us about the other things that we'll see in here. <laughs> Ooh, the tarot sheets. The four warlords. Alex and Iris. Oh, look at that. Six year old da daughter has just finished painting Karanak. Oh my goodness, what a good job. Hello, Iris. Ah, oh, and all that blood on the bottom as well. What a nice job. Fantastic. Uh, Gene Stealer Cult Aberrance by John Mar Margiota. Wow, those are really realistic. Cool. Nice job. Uh, Blood Bowl Ogre by Belsetch Medina. <laughs> I like the colors. Gloomspite Loom Boss by Alvin Wong. Pretty. Very pretty. Inquisitor Greyfax by Matthias Straff. <laughs> Model of the Month, Sigvold the Magnificent in non metal metals. Ooh, look at that. What a nice dark to light transition. Ah. And even his cloak. Ooh, intense. Wow, this one was Adam Gladzinski. Oh, and it tells them, um, we asked how it went about painting that super shiny gold army and gold armor, and it says down here, but I won't give that away. Foulspawn Blightspawn by Anton Cook. Wow. Look at that. Cool. <laughs> Conversion Corner Inquisitional. Inquisitorial Warband. Cool. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, neat. It's Inquisitor Sebastian von Dernbach. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Look at those. Ah, oh, Demon House Prisoner. Mmm, good Demon House choice. Oh, I love it. Look at all that. Oh, Gessley. This was by... Michael Hans. Painting question, how to paint these howling griffins? And they answered. We've got very dark colored luminous. Venari Orlin Hordens by Daroff, 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 Greeny. Genius to the Cults by David Stafford. Jacob Bug Bugmanson the 11th by Hansa Sky Power. Oh, an alternate head, I guess. Painted as well. 
Very nice. I like his, I like how his nose is tinted red because he's drinking so much. Cute. Ooh. Oh my goodness. What is going on here? Whoa. Wow. That's cool. So intense. That's really neat. Uh, allows us to share three pro big projects that were created by our local artists in Thailand. Ah, uh, cool. What in the world is that? What? Oh my gosh, look at that. <gasps> so intense. Oh, I won't show it off too much. So you can check it out. Ah, oh, so cool. All right. Um, in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. This issue, there's also four warlords, four armies, a new flashpoint series, and match play, battle report, kill team rules, and paint splatter. What do we have? Chaos okay, Space Marines versus Ultramarines. Cool. Nice art. <laughs> Tale of Four Warlords. Space Marines, Necrons, Sisters of Battle, and Orcs. Ooh. I recognize you. The Sons of Medusa, Joel Martin. Looking good. Good, good, good. Nice. The Thoked Dynasty. Ah, what a nice king. Oh, look at that. I like how you did that. Cool. Order of the Argent Shroud. That was Jonathan Stapleton. Drew Paley's. Oh, nice. Nice. Eh. Exorcist. Nice faces. Oh, this must have been hard. Sacrosanct Squad Bridget. <laughs> wow, the goths. Oh, I have to know how fun was that to paint? Oh my gosh, she's awesome. He is awesome and he is enormous and heavy. What a great thing to paint. Really cool. Ooh, you see all of them. I like the smoke in the distance. What a good looking army. And you know I love this army. Oh, I love it. Nice. So pretty. Order of the Arch Shroud. Such a pretty done. Oh, right. I forgot. Did you see? Do you remember when this was first displayed? It's displayed better in a, in a previous White Dwarf. I don't remember which White Dwarf, but uh, that's one cool looking model. The walk -off. Do you see how big this guy is? Oh, do you see how big this guy is? Look at that guy. Quite the army. And this big guy in the back. Oh my gosh, what a distinguished group of works. Ah, here we go. The Nashmund. Is it Nashmund or Nachmund? Or Nashmund? I'm not sure. The galaxy is being torn asunder with new wars, zones exploding into life with ever increasing frequency. In the first article of a new series, we begin a perilous journey through the Great Rift to explore the conflict raging within the Nachmund gauntlet. I have no idea how it is, but I'm going Nachmund until I know differently. <laughs> Uh -huh. 
Uh oh. Oh my gosh, that looks fun. I'm gonna read that later. Here we go. Nachmund, secondary objectives. Nice. Ooh. Well, easy to put, pull out. <gasps> Kalgor lives. A warrior's faith in his commander is his best armor and his strongest weapon. Nachmund. Ooh, look at that. All these stories about these worlds. So fun. Hmm? Hmm. Uh, what duty asks? Yeah. Amidst the shrine gardens of Ak Eris, the Keimer 64th Infantry find themselves pushed back by a relentless bow, outnumbered and without hope of support. Major, Major Jesmond Hesper finds his faith in the God Emperor tested. It's okay, Hesper. I'll be fine. Ooh, story, 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 story. Righteous warfare. Faith takes many forms, from the pious priests of the ecclesiarchy to heretical demons, worshippers of chaos cults. Such convictions can be powerful weapons, and the warriors of a crusade of faith can be nigh unbreakable in the heat of battle. Pass of the Righteous. Over the, so it says, over the next few pages, you will find new rules for using your armies in the Nachmund flashpoint. Opposite is an introduction to the Path of the Righteous, a new way to play Warhammer 40,000 Crusade. This is followed by a quartet of new agendas and a set of righteous battle honors for when your units gain a battle trait during their, their crusade. We particularly like the anti psyker detestation ability. Following this, you'll find three new psychic fortitudes and four more, and four powerful crusade relics that can be gifted to your mightiest foe. The difficult choice now is whether you dedicate yourself to the Emperor of Mankind, the Dark Gods, or some mysterious alien deity. Okay. They are, they are. I shall not give them away. Uh, Infernal Deliverance. Oh, it's the Battle Fort. Sisters of Battle versus Imperial Knights and Imperial Knights. Wow, those are brightly colored. Uh, Repentia. And purple. Purple Sisters. Neat. Uh, versus the Death Guard. Wow. Gruesome. Cleanly painted. Death Guard. Well, you know, cleanly for, for for Death Guard. I like the slight glossiness that's going on. It lends well to the horrifying Death Guard. All right, I'm not going to really be able to battle for it. Okay. The Lurking Worm. Gene Stealer cults are insidious broods of human Xenos hybrids that have. There's more. Oh. Okay. Uh, hybrids that have spread unnoticed on Imperial worlds for generations. They infiltrate the Imperium's social, industrial, and military fabric. And when their day of ascension dawns, their uprising is nigh irresistible. Da 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 Quirks. Name generator. Yorick Cavorla. Someone may now name someone Yor Yorick Cavorla. Yorick Cavorla. Oh, I should name my, my, my new gene stealer. Lady with the go goggles. Uh, one female name. Mm -hmm. Pike. Elric Yor Yorl. Yorl Zandis Krasker. Any female-ish names? Zask? Nasser? I oh, guess she could be Nasser. Okay, Nasser. Tarn right. There you are. 
there's her name, Nasser Tarnwright. I'm gonna forget it. Maybe I'll come back to this video. All right. Uh, da -da -da -da. Assembling your kill team over the next 15 pages. Ooh. You will find all the rules you'll need to assemble a world worm blade kill team for use in open narrative and match play games of kill team. The first step can be found on the opposite. Selecting. So what do we've got? We've got a neoplate leader. Um, equipped with auto gun gun, uh, equipped with one of the following options. So auto gun and gun butt or uh, shot gun and gun butt. Or one option from each is following master crafted auto pistol, bolt pistol, or web pistol, chain sword, power maw, or power pick. And then we've got 13 worm blade operatives selected from the following. All right. Um, make up a worm blade, including where? So, worm blade kill team. One of these make up a worm blade kill team. Got it. Uh, Keller Morph counts as two selections. Locust counts as two selections. Neophyte Brood Adept. Uh, Neophyte Gunner, Neophyte Gunner, Neophyte Heavy Gunner, Neophyte Heavy Gunner, Neophyte Icon Bear, Sanctus Sniper, and Sanctus Talon. Other than Brood Adept operatives, your kill team can only include each of the above operative. Brood Adepts. Brood Adepts. Uh, your kill team can only include up to two Gunner operatives and up to two Heavy Gunner operatives and up to two Cult Agent operatives um they've got skill abilities strategic ploys tactical ploys this operative a uh, preternatural assassin this operative cannot be equipped with equipment i would have a four plus in room each time a shooting attack is made against this operative in the roll defense dice step of that shooting attack before rolling your defense dice if it is in cover you can do one of the following retain one additional dice as a successful normal save as a result of cover. Nice. Retain one dice as a successful critical save instead of a normal save as a result of cover. Um. Oh well, I guess it all depends. Each time a shooting attack is made against. If it isn't cover, you can do one of the following. Cool. That's always nice. Common abilities. During the turn first turning point. You can choose to change its order. That's always nice to do. And you'll fight leader, kill or more. You'll fight leader, kill or more. Ooh, three APL. All the stuff. You'll fight brood dips, you'll fight gunners, you'll fight heavy gunners, you'll fight icon barrels. Where's my aberrant? Uh, Sanctus Sniper, Sanctus Talon, Focus. Ah, uh, sad, no aberrants yet. Maybe in the future. Equipment, all the various equipment, and stuff. Progressive objectives. Oh, shoot. Endgame objectives, that's always nice to have. Stack Ops. <laughs> Special ops, spec ops rules, rare equipment, strategic, strategic assets, more spec ops, new rules, woohoo! And that's that. So if anyone is interested in playing uh, these particular guys in Kill Team, now you can. These guys. Cool, nice. Worm Blade Kill Team. So, yeah, so you can. Paint them up like you see here. Simple or more detailed. Kind of, yeah. Classic style and contrast style. Or you just combine the best of both. Alright, from the maelstrom of a sundered world, the eight realms were born and with their birth began a war to claim them. This issue is a battle tome update, an Ossiac Bone Reapers campaign, and some icy inspiration. Ooh, I like icy inspiration. Whoa. Mm, I like you. Cool. You look cool. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, I see. I see what works. I see what works. Asiarch Empire, nice. 
The Asak Empire is a dark jewel in Nagash's crown, a chilling portent of what his necrotopia would resemble. Were it ever to come to pass, across these lands death holds sway. What life there is persists only by the will of its unliving overlords. Hmm. Nihilus Roamgate. Gothar. That'll be fun. Oh, gotta read about that. Gotta read about all these levels. Ah, oh, so much lore. Fun, 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 fun. Tom Celestial, unyielding, unstoppable, unfeeling. This is the creed of the Ossiarch Bone Reapers, a strange and fearsome breed of undead. These legions are the great necromancer's finest troops, wholly dedicated to raising up his twisted necrotopia. To do this, however, the Ossiarchs must exact a grisly tithe from the living, a tithe of bone. Where's my general? My general. Ooh. Some Slaneshi brought into the mix. Battle Tome. Okay, so what do we have? I have not played these guys much yet. So I don't even know if I can recognize the difference. Um, da -da 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 -da. Over the following pages, you will find a host of new exciting rules to use alongside Battle Tome Ostiac Bone Reapers. Um, Oh, I was wondering about whether this would change with the new rules. Curious, very curious. This section of this article has new command abilities for relentless discipline points and new command abilities for good. Good. That's nice because I felt a little bit off with the all the command actions that you couldn't do. Heroic actions. Uh, things that you do every round. Why am I forgetting? It'll come back to me. Um, and new heroic actions you can use for Osiric Bone Reapers heroes. Okay. Update the following battle traits. Relentless Discipline. If your army is an Osiric Bone Reapers army, you do not receive command points. Instead, you receive Relentless Discipline points. Okay. Generating Relentless Discipline points. Uh, you receive them in the following ways. At the start of each battle round, after determining who will take which turn, you receive one Relentless Discipline for every Osiric Bone Reapers hero that is on the battlefield. One relentless, relentless discipline point for each friendly liege that is on the battlefield, and three relentless discipline points if Catacros is your general and is on the battlefield. So that is a wee bit different since it used to be one for every Osiric Bone Reapers unit, and now it is one for Osir every Osiric Bone Reapers hero. Not that Osiric Bone Reapers don't like having their heroes. Mm hmm. If you will take the first turn, you receive one Relentless Discipline. If you will take the second turn, you receive two Relentless Discipline points. At the start of each hero phase, roll a dice. At each hero phase, roll a dice for each friendly Osiric Bone Reapers unit on the battlefield, including heroes. For each six, you receive one extra Relentless Discipline point. Okay, so that's pretty close to what it was. Anyway, that's fine. All Relentless Discipline points that you have remaining are lost at the end of each battle round. Okay, using relentless discipline points. Relentless discipline points are used to issue a command in the same manner as command points, but they can only be used as spent to use an Osiric command ability, keeping me from all of the uh, all of the universal command abilities. Osiric command abilities are command abilities that appear on a war scroll that has the Osiric Bone Reapers keyword or an Osiric Bone Reaper Legion command ability were included in the list of Osiric command abilities below. Let's see what we get. The restriction that you cannot use the same command ability more than once in the same phase does not apply to Osiric command abilities. For example, you can use the Shield Wall command ability on the Mortec Guard war scroll more than once in the same phase as long as that command is issued by a model that has not already issued a command in that phase and it received by and it is received by a unit that has not already received a command in that phase in addition you cannot use the expert slayers strategics or swift battalion abilities see core rules 26.3 instead for each battalion in your army that has any of these battalion abilities once per battle at the start of any battle round you can choose to receive one relentless discipline point okay that's all right um, for each battalion in your army that has any of these battalion abilities. Ah, gotcha. Sure. Osiric command abilities. You can use this command ability in your movement phase. 
uh, unstoppable advance. Oh, nice. Uh, when you pick a friendly Osir Bone Reaper's unit to make a normal move, run, or retreat, add three inches to the move characteristic. Nice. Uh, Renit constructs. You can use this Osir command ability at the end of your movement phase. This unit receives the command must for must be a friendly Osir Bone Reaper unit that remains stationary in that phase and is more than three inches from all enemy units. You can heal up to D3 wounds allocated to that unit, or if no wounds are allocated to it, you can return a number of slain models to that unit that have a combined wounds characteristic of D3 or less. So this is the Osiric Bone Reaper's version of the universal command ability and that allows you to bring back guys every round as long as they're outside of three inches but also the osiric bone reapers have to remain stationary which you know is okay because osiric bone reapers are pretty good at healing so i don't mind the restriction now that i get to do this as well unflinching coordination you can use this osiric command ability in the combat phase after a friendly osiric bone reapers hero has fought for the first time in that phase the unit that issues the command must be a friendly Osiric Bone Reaper's hero that has already fought in that phase. The unit that receives the command must be a friendly Osiric Bone Reaper that is not a hero that has not fought in the phase and that is within three inches of an enemy unit. That unit can fight immediately. Oh, I certainly like that. So hero fights for the first time. Then the hero that unit issues the command must be a friendly after a friendly so hero fights and then you get your non-hero unit to fight right next to him which is perfect i like a lot uh battle traits add the following heroic actions to the battle traits section in battle tome rcr capone reapers relentless leadership at the start of your hero phase you can carry out this heroic action with a friendly Osiric Bone Reaper's hero. Instead of any other heroic action, you can carry out with that hero. Our list leadership, we pick one friendly uh, Osiric Bone Reaper's hero. Until the end of this turn, you can pick that you can use an Osiric command ability to issue a command with that hero without a relentless discipline point being spent. Cool. Sounds good. Heroic actions. I get two special heroic actions. Uh, necromantic mastery. Oh, it's just those things. At the start of your hero phase, you can carry out this hero at your hero phase. And that was your hero phase, was that? Your hero phase. At the start of your hero phase, you can carry out this heroic action with a friendly mortison instead of any other heroic action you can carry out with that mortison. Uh, pick one friendly mortison if the first spell that the Mortison attempts to cast in this turn is successfully cast, that spell cannot be unbound. Nice. Right, so we got open play stuff, match play, some grand strategies specific for the Osiric Bone Reapers, which is nice. Oh, well, actually just one, I suppose. Yeah, one grand strategy. When the battle ends, you complete this grand strategy if any Mortic Guard or Cavalos Death Riders units from your starting army has the same number of models in that unit as they had at the start of the battle. Nice. Unrelenting efficiency and battle tactics. Um, one, two, three battle tactics for them. Pick one friendly Cavalos Death Riders unit more than three inches from enemy units you can complete this battle tactic if that unit makes a charge move this turn and is within three of any enemy units at that turn nice i mean that that sounds like something i could do all right i like that unfeeling recursion you complete this battle tactic if two or more osteric bone reaper units had plain models returned to them with renit construct osteric command ability this turn also this is two or more Two or more with 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 renit construct. This is the unit receives command. And until station just command ability at the end of your movement phase. And you can use the command ability more than once as long as it's from a different hero on a different unit. So why wouldn't you do that? All uh no wonder they have to remain stationary. <laughs> right, you can do this multiple times and even get yourself a Battle tactic completed for it. Whew, nasty. I very much enjoy that. 
Uh, the Tithe demands pick one hero or monster on the battlefield. You complete this battle tactic if that unit is destroyed. Oh, I'm sorry. Pick one enemy hero or monster on the battlefield. You complete the battle tactic if that unit is destroyed this turn. If the enemy hero or monster was destroyed by an attack made by a friendly Gothazar harvester. By the way, I love these guys. Uh, score one additional victory point. My monster, uh, my Gothazar harvester is a beast and i need more of them yeah i need more so many past the glory stiff for osiac bone reapers oh, and that's it oh that was so fun i am so glad with those changes quite happy with them anyone playing osiac bone reapers do let me know what you think of those changes i like them very much so at the tithe takers the undying legions of the osiac bone reapers are constructed purely for war and conquest if the living defy Nagash's rule, the Osiric Bone Reapers are sent to quell the rebellion and collect the bones of those who would stand against the great necromancer. Mm hmm. So it is a campaign. Fun times. In order to fight this campaign, you will need an Osiric Bone Reapers army. You will need the, a copy of the campaign roster supplied with this article. And when you first fill in the campaign roster, you will need to name the leash. Cavalos, who leads your army. We've included a naming table you can use. Um, I don't have a leech Cavalos built. But I guess I will at some point. Then list all of the Osiarch Bone Reaper units in your collection. Name generator. His name is Petriaxi, to make it different. Overlord of the Western Cadaverous. <laughs> rules of engagement rules of engagement curated by the age of sigmar games developers focuses on the creation design and evolution of the rules for warhammer age of sigmar this issue lewis looks at some of the recent changes to building an army and how to make the most of them this is lewis no lewis okay so answering a whole bunch of questions one question why cut down the number of models a unit can have, especially in horde armies? Good question. Um, I will let him answer that. Okay, but now I have units that won't fit into my list or core battalion. Can you explain how the old War Scroll battalions convert to core battalions in the new edition? Do you have any pointers for building armies within these new restrictions? I imagine he does. I did, 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 did. Ooh, lots of things. He has lots of answers for that. While we have you, what about army building for pitch battles 2021 restrictions? Do you have any advice advice for handling all of these blank monsters? Oi, what about those of us who want to smash our opponents with monsters? Be fair. I, for one, would also be one of the people who want to smash the opponents with monsters. I love big baddies. I love my big baddies. Ooh, I see star. The Winter Warriors. The Fantastical Realms is an ongoing series of articles, which I love, by the way, uh, showing you how you can build and paint your Warhammer Age of Sigmar armies based around the mortal realms they live and fight in. Grab your scarves and don your mittens because things are getting chilly. Mmm, with the ogres. Ooh, cold colors. Contrasting and complementary colors. How nice. What a nice little wheel. Realms of winter, 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 pretty, 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 Ooh, cold, cold, converting and painting your winter warriors, chaos lord, chaos lord, huh, I guess now it is, well, technically I guess that is the chaos lord, isn't it? I converted the Chaos Lord from my Cypher Lords uh, to fight alongside my Cypher Lords warband. Chaos Lord by Dan Pardon. Some cold, cold skeletons by Luke Blick. Mutilith Vortex Beef by Luke O'Crumble. Cold. So cold. Ogroid Myrmidon by Chris Harkness. General and Stern Mage by Ashley Lowe. Pretty. Hmm. 
That's pretty snow-like. I wonder what you used. Oh. You looking good. Spirit of Durthu by Andy Barlow. Mm -hmm. Iron Jazz Mega Boss by Joe Neighbor. Iron Jazz Brutes by Steve Barrett. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so amazing. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. <laughs> Horse Stomper Mega Gargan by Aunt Saliva. Oh, you look good. Oh, he's a bit nippy. That's a bit nippy. Ah, oh, it's my favourite. Oh, my favourite. Oh, it's so awesome. All right. Ogre, Ogre Gluttons by Richard Curtin. Ah, oh, I like that. I like, I like that skin tone. I very much like that skin tone. Hmm. Iron Jaws Mega Boss by Josh Noy. It's pretty. Pretty. Lyriel Ulthral by James Brock. Tur that turquoise is so nice, isn't it? Black Coach by Joel Townsend. Ooh. Very white. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Nice little addition. Uh, from the Sigmarium Mausoleum Kit. Wow. Those are vibrant. Oh, so vibrant. What a fun time. <laughs> Look at their little red noses. They be freezing, but they be having fun. Oh my gosh. Mango Squids by Crystal Tuker. Squigs are always, always look best painted in bright eye-catching colors. I agree. I very much like what you did here. This is such a pretty color combination. Oh, she has how she did it too. Oh, it's gorgeous. I'm going to have to look at this color combination because I want to make, I want to remake this color. I'm doing it. Uh, Loka, uh, Loka, Loka is Loka or Loka? Anyway, Vi by Mark Bedford. Wow. Really like how you did that. Seems really nicely realistic there. So nice. Da -da. Oh! Ahem. A little Heirs of Reason by a fresh page. A new chapter is written in the book of Sergeant Nacium as the Tome Keepers of the Third Company prosecute wars against enemies of the Imperium, yet misfortune seems to plague their every step in this first of the six-part series by Callum Davis. Oh, Callum, you're so busy. All right, I'm going to read that later. <laughs> Land Raider Banisher. Neat little check pattern. Mm -hmm. Dirk Wainers, Land Raider. As we come to the end of the magazine, we take a look at the games. Uh, a look at the games the studio staff have been playing and the malls they've been painting. This month, a Grey Knight's Tank, some unsavory heroes, Stormcast Eternals, veterans of Middle Earth, and some terrain building. You are not Stormcast Eternals. Unsavory heroes. Ben Hum, Lyle Lowry, Andrew King. Let's some pretty, 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 pretty. Ah, there's a storm. Whoa, though, our colorful is that? That looks, um, is that not goes purple? Is it? With highlights? Wow. Wow, so good. That looks so, the color scheme is. Intense. I bet it looks fantastic on the battlefield. Nice. Oh, containers. Nicely done containers. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Well, I don't know what you're doing, but I enjoy it. Oh, that was fun. So much fun. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you're wondering about these nails, uh, they are white aluminum metal color by Vaiho. And uh, boy, are they shiny. Right. Bye! Thank you guys, I really appreciate the help you've given me, and the chats, and the memes. <laughs>